What is up Android phone fans? It's Eric for mobile back again with another ROM review. Uh, it's been a while since I put a video up with uh, the holidays and I was sick right before Christmas. Um, I haven't got a lot of videos up. I apologize in advance for that guys. Um, I'm trying to get more videos out. So today I wanted to do another ROM review on a Lollipop ROM. And as you can see from the title, it is the Illusion ROM. Uh, for the LG G3, like I said, this is a Lollipop ROM, Android 5.0.2, so it's the very latest uh, version of Android uh, for the G3. And um, we've gotten to a point with Lollipop ROMs where um, you've got the big name guys like Cyanogen Mod and Paranoid Android pushing out Lollipop, where people have been porting them to the LG G3, and then you've got a whole bunch of other ROMs that are not quite as well known but are still really good alternatives. And this is one of those uh, ROMs, the Illusion ROM. Um, it's, on, it's on a few devices. It's not crazy well known, but um, in my experience, it has been a great ROM. Also, um, with these ROMs that are coming out, uh, you're kind of on two levels where you've got more of the base ROMs that don't have a lot of customization, and then you've got uh, other ROMs that have really been stepping it up and adding in a lot of user customizations. This ROM would fall in the latter portion where they've gone in and added a lot more options where if you were to download Cyanogen Mod or Paranoid Android, that's more of a completely stock fill at the moment. So to get into the review, this ROM, uh, it's, it's buttery smooth. I say that on every one, but it's just always true with Lollipop ROMs. They just always run really well. Um, no complaints in the speed department. Battery's been really great. I ran it all day. No complaints on the battery at all. Uh, it'll get you through the whole day, no problem. And stability has been really good. Um, I've had a couple of ROMs where, uh, Lollipop ROMs specifically, where the kernel has crashed. And it'll give you like a blue screen like you'd see in Windows. And it has a bunch of white text. Um, it's not a big deal because it gives you options just to reboot your phone and then it comes up and it's working fine. I have not had my ROM or my kernel crash in this ROM at all. It's, it's ran real smooth, so I was glad to see that everything appears to be working perfectly good. Now, to get into those customizations that I was talking about, first thing you're going to notice is when you jump into the settings, uh, they've added a dark theme. Now, a lot of uh, ROM producers have gone to adding this dark theme, at least in just the settings for now. It's not all encompassing where a lot of the Google apps are dark and menus and stuff like that. Uh, what From what I've seen, typically it's just been this settings menu has got the dark theme. I like it. It's a good change of pace from all the white. Um, I get to a point where I feel like the white can be a little bit overbearing. So I like to see the dark. That's the first thing you notice. Uh, you got a normal settings menu here, all the options you'd uh, expect to see, developer options. Uh, you've got to unlock that as you would manually. First thing I want to show you is under display. Um, they've got all the regular display options, but if you scroll down, you're going to have display density and navigation bar height added in. Display density is like your DPI, so you can change it to change um, how large or small everything is scaled on your screen. And then navigation bar height is exactly what it sounds like. Right now it's on the standard. You can change it down to be smaller and you can see down there, boom, it changed it to be real tiny. Uh, I like it to be the normal height. So I just leave it up there at 48 and it goes back to normal height. So that's nice. It's quick. You don't have to flash anything extra in your recovery. It just works. Um, they've also got the double tap to wake feature, uh, which is nice to see included. So that's just a double tap on the status bar to put the phone to sleep. And the double tap to wake up the phone, of course, works. Knock code does not work. That's only in LG-based um, ROMs. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. I don't use it a lot, so it doesn't affect me. But if you're a big user of the um, knock code, then that's something to consider. It does not work in any Lollipop ROM, just the double tap to wake. So uh, that's pretty much it for the display settings. And then all the real goodies are hidden under the interface tab here. You've got basic interface and advanced interface. So under basic interface, you've got the quick settings. All that's in here is the quick pull down. I've showed this in other videos where with one swipe, it'll bring down all of your, um, your quick tiles here, quick settings in one swipe where you see I have it turned off. So it takes two swipes like it does in basic stock Android. So that's nice. And then there's also smart pull down. So if you have any pending notifications and you pull down, it'll immediately pull down and show you everything. If you don't have any notifications, it'll just have uh, the first pull down. So that's good to see. 
Under the status bar options here, you've got things like the clock and date. You can change the alignment to the center. You can add in an AM, PM next to the time as well as the date, say like Friday or whatever. Um, so that's the date and time. There's also battery options. This is nice. Um, this hasn't been included until recently in Lollipop ROMs. So you can add a battery percentage to the status bar. So next to the status bar, there it is, 98%. As well as you can add um, the battery bar. So this is like in my UI where it puts a bar all the way across the top of your status bar that has your battery percentage. And as your battery goes down, that bar goes down to zero. So that's pretty good to see. Um, and also you can change the icon itself. So if you want it to be a circle, you can change it to a circle. That's really common in CyanogenMod. Um, I like to leave it as the stock icon portrait, whatever you like, um, you can do it there. You can also add um, the network traffic to your status bar. So what, whatever amount of data you're using, it shows that percentage up in the status bar, stuff like that. You can add the My UI carrier label. This basically just adds carrier text to your status bar like you'll see on iPhones and stuff. Up in the status bar, it always has the carrier text up there. You can add that. I leave it off just because I like more room for my notifications to show up and they're not going to be pushing over into my icons over here. You can click to show weather. I had this um, shown in my other video, but I didn't have the weather enabled. So there it is. You can enable weather in the status bar. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's always there and convenient to find whenever you want to look at that. There's brightness controls. Um, the notification ticker in Lollipop, they disabled when you get a notification to show some of the text in the status bar. Like if you got a text message, it would show the you know the content of that message. That no longer exists in Lollipop, so they've added a feature to add that back in. And then the double tap to sleep is what I was showing you where you tap on the status bar and it puts the phone to sleep. There's also clock settings. This is a widget that was um, in all the Cyanogen mod ROMs. It's been added to this ROM. So if you use that widget, you can come in and customize the widget and add it to your home screen. Also, there's option to add the search bar to your recents. So if you pull up your recents, you will have a search bar up at the top. Um, you know, fairly standard stuff. I always leave it in there just because I like to have it. And then you have your advanced interface. I don't get into a lot of this stuff a whole often because I just kind of like the way things are set up already, but you can mess um, with your animations, the wake lock blocker, you can add gestures to open up apps, um, the circle ribbon, so when you swipe up, you can add other functions to this circle instead of just the Google Now um, functionality, stuff like that. As far as customizations goes, that's pretty much it for this ROM. Like I said, it runs buttery smooth. And uh, we're kind of to the point in Lollipop ROMs where there's probably about a dozen of them out for the G3 right now. I haven't done videos on every single one of them and purely my thinking on that is because, um, like I said in the beginning, there's like Cyanogen Mod and Paranoid Android, some of the bigger names that have put out apps that are more of a stock feel, um, that get you know nightly updates and are always on the bleeding edge of the Android version. And then you have all the other um, smaller ROMs, all the little guys that are um, porting over ROMs to the phone and they've started to go crazy with customizations like you see in this phone. They've added all these customizations. Most of this stuff doesn't exist in Cyanogen Mod or Paranoid Android. Now, it will eventually. Um, they take a lot longer to implement this stuff into their ROMs just so that everything works correctly But from what I've seen running this ROM everything works buttery smooth and um, You know, I trust that since you're here watching this video um, You know you want to know what you're getting into before you flash a ROM and I can tell you that Pretty much all of these ROMs that uh, are adding in a lot of customizations They have all pretty much worked like I said before, I've had that kernel crash a couple times where it comes up with the blue screen where the kernel craps out and you have to reboot your phone. That's a very rare occasion. Um, they fixed most of the bugs with Lollipop. So when you, re when you reboot your phone, you're going to have your data. You don't have to go through any loops getting your data working again. Uh, the GPS works. The camera works with the video where video didn't work before. Bluetooth works. Bluetooth calling can still be spotty, but that's just a bug we have to live with. That's existed all the way back to Jelly Bean and stuff like that. So um, that's just going to be a fact of life. But for the most part, these builds are all really stable. Um, and I can recommend pretty much any of them. This one, though, is great because I have just not had a single glitch at all. It's fast, it's smooth, no crashes, no freezes, um, nothing to do with the kernel, anything like that. Uh, every, everything just works. So I think it's a great ROM. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. Also, really quick, guys, if you've noticed in my videos, um, I got this blue bottom right here for my birthday. 
My wife got me the D-Brand skins for my phone. This is not a, a plug in any way. I'm not getting sponsored to say this or whatever, but um, these skins are absolutely phenomenal. I've got the, uh, as you can see, the carbon fiber back here with the blue accents on the camera and the power. Um, it comes with a couple, couple replaceable backs, a bunch of the rings and stuff. I went with the blue on the front and the black on the back. Um, they're awesome. I'll leave a link to their website in the description of the video if you guys want to check that out for your G3 or for any device you're running. They have skins for tons of different devices. Anyways, that's it for this guys. This video, guys. Uh, this was Illusion ROM. Definitely check it out. I would recommend giving it an install and running with it for a while. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys coming here. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to keep uh, pushing out updates as soon as stuff becomes available. So keep it tuned, and we'll see you guys on the next one.